and welcome to the session on BPO skill booster. Today we are going to talk about key skills required to acquire a job in a BPO industry and by the end of today's session you will be at least able to identify few key skills which you think are there in you that you can brush up or develop as a strength to find a job in the BPO industry. Now I want to share a very interesting information with you all which I guess should open up your eyes very bright and shine. Uh, according to a recent research they say that the BPO industry is going to face a talent shortage of about 2,62,000 professionals by the year 2012. So it is time for you to brush up your skills and also prepare yourself for a stable career in the BPO industry. You also will be surprised to know that they also offer a lot of career counseling sessions. They offer you a lot of uh, you know training skills like resume writing, uh, voice and accent training, culture training etc. which are going to help you to design or craft a career path for yourself. Now I want to ask you a very simple question which is why do you think the youngsters today get attracted to a BPO job? Uh, starting salaries which are so attractive. Okay, very good. Pick and drop facilities provided. Okay, so pick and drop facility yeah. is a major attraction. Yeah. One of my friend is working in a BPO industry and whenever she makes a sales for his company, she get attractive uh, at incentives for that. Okay, so is she in a sales process? Yeah. Okay, very good. We get to interact with people from across, across the globe which gives us more exposure. Okay, very interesting. Our lifestyle is totally changed. We get to lead a modern lifestyle. Okay, which so is attractive, lifestyle, attractive lifestyle, attractive salary, uh, pick and drop facility. So if you consolidate everything, I think there are a lot of benefits of joining this industry rather than not joining this industry. Excellent. Now I also want to tell you one very interesting thing that uh, you know there are a lot of universities and colleges in India today who are promoting BPO education amongst youngsters and are also training them so that they can find a job you know right after their colleges or graduation. So which is very interesting. Okay, this industry also you know offers job opportunities to underprivileged and physically challenged people. You know, so you, you do not even get to work with brilliantly sharp people, but you also get to work with people who are physically challenged, but are also very, very performance oriented. So that is a very interesting fact for you to learn. Now tell me something, uh, what do you think are the key skills required to get a job in a BP industry? Can you think of any random skills? Yeah, please tell me. Uh, the priority is given to good communication skills. Very interesting, Firstly. communication skills, very good. Yes. Good expression and good body language. Okay, so you mean to say a verbal and a non-verbal body language goes hand in glove. Yep. So you need to have both the skills together. Okay. One has to. Ha one must have a good listening skills also. Okay. Very good. Anything else? When we are interacting with people, not just in India as well as uh, even outside, the gr grammar comes into play. Most oh Indians yes, absolutely. cannot speak. Grammatically correct. Absolutely. See again, now let me take you through you know very interesting key factors which play a very important role in you finding a job in the BP industry. Yes, we are talking about communication skills. Now when we look at uh, you know there are in a BP industry there are voice based processes and there are non voice processes. So typically in a voice based process it is very very important for you to have excellent communication skills. Now why am I not saying good skills? Because it does not come handy. You need to train yourself, you need to come up that learning curve and you have to have excellent communication skills. Now let us look at some parameters of communication skills. The first is language skills, you know it is very important to have good language skills. That means that you should have an excellent hold on your grammar, you should have good vocabulary, you should have good pronunciation skills and also good fluency. Now I want to just highlight few things here that when you talk about grammar, okay, we are not looking at something which is very very extremely excellent grammar, we are looking at something called as a functional grammar. That means when you ever you make a conversation, you should be able to put your points across in a very very clear way. Okay, The other person should be able to comprehend it very well. So I am talking about good sentence construction. I am talking about short sentences, 
I am not telling you that you should have long, long sentences because then it does not leave enough food for thought for the other person to realize and also your communication should be very short and crisp. Okay. Vocabulary of course, it plays it is a very important role in grammar because the choice of words that you use, the terminology that you use is very very important. Pronunciation, can someone anyone would like to highlight what pronunciation is? One should know the correct pronunciation, how to pronounce a word correctly because if pronunciation goes wrong then it may change the meaning of the sentence. Okay, very interesting, do you all agree with me? Okay, so give me, give me an example. Uh, suppose there is a word uh, choreographer. Okay. Some people pronounce it as choreographer or okay. <laughs> uh, for example, people uh, say uh, uh, there is a word pizza. So, okay. people call it pizza or pizza whatever. Okay, like, so the, the entire meaning of the whole thing changes you know, so then you do not like to hear it. Okay. Uh, what about fluency? Fluency is again very important, you need to be very very fluent. That means, uh, whenever you are thinking like you know when you speak something, it should always match up to your thinking. It should not look like as if you are thinking and then you are speaking, there is always a gap. Okay, So, you need to zap the gap and you need to make way for your thought process to be more logical and more rational and should come out with a lot of fluency. Okay. Now, let us look at comprehension skills. Now, comprehension skills are very, very important because in a normal conversation when you talk, okay, like you talk to your friends or you talk to your parents. Now, what happens is if they are trying to communicate something to you and you do not get it or you do not understand it, then it is not any more a good communication or a good conversation. So, when you talk about comprehension skills, we are looking at understanding the intent or the message the other person is trying to convey to you. Okay. Now, for example, if I tell you that uh, uh, you know you would like to, would you like to understand what does BPO industry mean? Yeah. Yes. So, she has underst understood this entire conversation very, very beautifully. Let us talk about the meaning. Do you think intent and meaning are the same things? Are they the same things? No, they are not. Okay. When you talk about the meaning, we are also trying to understand that whenever we form a grammatically correct sentence, it should have a clear meaning. That means that when you convey something to someone, it should go to the other person very, very clearly. There should The person should not think about it, you know, it should not be like, Oh God, what did she say or he say? Okay. Then we are looking at voice and accent skills. Have you all heard the term voice and accent? Yes. Now, voice and accent does not necessarily mean that you have to have an American accent or a UK accent or an Australian accent. You do not need necessarily need to have that. What you really need to have in today's scenario is that you should be able to speak in a neutral, clear English. Okay. Now, sometimes when, when the BP industry had come into place, when you know there were trainings happening and people were trying to understand American accent, they used to fake an accent. Okay, so, they used to try to be like Americans, they used to speak like them. Now, it was important initially because we were trying to bridge the gap, we were trying to make sure the industry comes in place. However, now it is not there anymore. Okay, you, can, you can speak to them in a very neutral, clear English. Um, have you ever heard of the term consonant sounds and vowel sounds? Okay, so it's it's basically they go hand in glove. They give you a lot of meaning to the word. Now, what is accent? I just you know spoke to you about the accent. I told you there's a UK accent and there's a US, US accent and there's an Australian accent. Okay, so we are going to talk about regional influence. Okay, now you know a lot of times what happens is you know when you when you talk. Okay. There, are, there are possibilities of your native language or the, or the natural way of your speaking coming into a hindrance and blocking your communication flow. Now, sometimes what happens is uh, you know in India we bring in a lot of diverse cultures and we bring in a lot of different kinds of languages and the way we speak those languages. So, what happens is when we are trying to acquire English as a language, we you know end up uh, you know, after about few seconds or few minutes, we end up using the same kind of a tone. Okay, so it starts reflecting into our English language. 
Okay. So, you know there are a lot of uh, states like uh, you know Bengal, then Tamil Nadu, then Punjab, Haryana. These are the states you know in which we have the, we have our own way of speaking. Okay. So, when we try to train people or when we try to speak English, there is always a possibility that we will start reflecting that mother tongue into that language. Okay. Now, I will just give you a small example. Uh, let us say you know I, I have uh, I am coming from a particular state in the country and I would like to learn communication skills. Okay. Now, when I go for an interview or when I go to you know get an, an, an admission in the uh, university or the institute, I might end up saying I am here to improve my communication skills. Now, how does that sound to you? Does it sound funny? Would you laugh at me? Would you laugh at me? Okay. So, it is not communication skills, it is called communication skills. Okay. So, I want you to think of an example and let me know of two such examples when you when you must have encountered something like that. Um, the word blue. Blue. It comes uh, sometimes I have heard pronunciations like blue. Blue. Okay. So, the Which whole thing is exaggerated and you say blue. blue. Okay. Very interesting. Any, any other, other example? And like she said earlier pizza. Pizza. Okay. So, the, pizza. The word and pizza, pizza goes into pizza. Yeah. So, exactly. So, I think now we can understand that there is something called as a regional influence that get mixed up into our English language and starts reflecting into it. Very good. Now, there is a lot of uh, focus you know on training such candidates for a BPO job because what is required is you need to communicate and converse very, very clearly. Okay. So, all your sounds, all your pronunciations, everything has to be in place and you are ready to take your calls. All right. Now, let us look at something called soft skills. You know, this is something that was not there when I was in school or college. Nobody told us what soft skills were. You know, so, you guys are very, very lucky to have something called as soft skills in your uh, education. Uh, soft skills are basically, you know, these are skills which are, uh, you know, which are the, which are the very most, uh, you know, uh, strong attributes, you know, when you are trying to make a conversation with someone. Okay. Now, when you, when you, you know, if you are working as a customer care executive or you are working as a customer care agent, you need to have reflection of telephone etiquette, you need to have a reflection of customer service, you need to have a reflection of listening skills. Okay, now, these three things together, they form an excellent conversation and also you know reflect the fact that you have been well trained and you know how to handle a particular call. All right. Now, are there any questions that you have right now, you know in all this? Would you like to, do you have any questions on this? Is there anything that you have not understood? Okay. So, can we just sum it up quickly and then we can move on to listening skills. Now, when we talk about communication, we are looking at four key components, which is language skills, comprehension, voice and accent and soft skills. Under language skills, we are talking about grammar, we are talking about vocabulary, pronunciation and fluency. Then we come to comprehension, which is trying to understand the intention of the speaker or the meaning of a particular sentence, which is intent or the meaning. All right. Then we have voice and accent skills, where we talk about consonant sounds and vowel sounds, we talk about accent, we also talk about mother tongue influence. Okay. Then we talk about soft skills, in which you are mentioning about telephone etiquettes, listening skills and customer service. Okay. Now, I would like to have ask you another question, which is what is the difference between active listening and passive listening? are the two different things for example let's say uh, if we if we are like entering into a crowded place and there is a lot of noise around so uh, if the noise around which we are hearing that is the passive listening the message is not clear to us we are listening random things whereas in active listening uh, suppose someone calls our name so all of a sudden our attention goes towards that thing so that is the active listening wherein the uh, the the message is absolutely clear to us that is active listening. Okay, interesting. Now, active listening is a process where the listener takes the responsibility 
and understands the intention of the speaker that is active listening. Okay. Now, why do we need active listening? We need active listening because you know we need to understand the message, we need to comprehend it very well and we have to provide solutions or information. Okay. So, to do that in a BPO industry, we need to have very, very active listening skills. It is not just about active listening skills. Okay. Now, what are the barriers to active listening skills? Can anyone tell me few few barriers? Uh, the noise around maybe. Okay. What what about others? The message is not clear. Okay. So is that a barrier? Is it is a barrier when the person is intent on listening, but the other person's message is not conveyed completely. Okay. So that means when you interrupt somebody. When okay. You so interruptions somebody. means that that hinders the process of active listening. Very well said. So, I will give you quickly some barriers of active listening which you can you know maybe remember. It could be very helpful to you to you know understand your active listening process you know very well. Now, it is sometimes you know we make assumptions. Okay. Now, let us say there are two friends who are talking to each other and you know we think that we know each other very well. So, the minute the other person or the friend is trying to say something to you, you assume. You say oh of course, I know that. Now, the thing is that you have not even said what you wanted to say. So, she has already assumed it and she is ready with a response. Now, there is a very interesting thing with listening. Okay, Sometimes, we are so good with assuming things that we also start interpreting it in our own way and we are ready with a response. Okay, So, assumptions is no no for active listening. You should never assume. Even if you know the answer, even if you know what the information the other person is trying to seek you should never interrupt or even assume. Okay. The other is you know criticizing someone. Now, if you know something and or if you do not like something, okay. now it is not important for you to just tell the other person that I do not like it, okay, because it can also hurt someone's feelings. So, you should never say I do not like it or criticize someone. Okay. You should never do that, because then you might not get the information that the person is actually trying to give you. You know, in a very typical customer service scenario, when you, when you will, uh, you know, understand customer service in a better way, you will really get to know that if somebody, someone is trying to say something to you, and you know, you suddenly interrupt, okay, or you criticize, you know, the person will stop. He will say, "No, I don't want to share the information." Yeah, it happens a lot of times. Then you can also talk about selective listening. Now, selective listening is is a major no-no. You should never do selective listening because you you end up hampering your own listening process okay because you you used to certain kind of information and that's all that you want if somebody is trying to give you something more you will not take it okay so you should be open to listening all right then you should never make judgments about someone okay you should never make judgments about the other person that if a person is trying to say something don't judge the person because he speaks somebody is shouting your name okay maybe he is not a very good friend of yours Okay, but he's shouting your name and top of his voices, and he says that, "Hey, listen to me! Hey, listen to me!" So you would say, "Oh my God, why is this person, you know, shouting?" So you form a judgment. You should not do that. Instead, you should listen to the person. Okay. Okay. So now, I want I, another question. I want to ask you is that, does active listening really mean effective customer service? Yes or no? Yes. So active listening is equal to effective customer service. Yes. No, coupled with knowledge. Very good. So that means she is listening actively, and the rest everyone is sleeping. Okay. So active listening is definitely a good customer service attitude. However, you should also have certain other elements to customer service, which is you should have empathy, you should have care, you should have a positive attitude, and you should also not form judgments and opinion about a certain kind of a customer. Okay, because sometimes people might call you, they might just shout at you or they might scream at you or they might not say anything. You might even have to go out that extra mile and take information from them. Okay, so, active listening is also a very key element of good customer service. All right, students, now we have learnt few skills which can help you acquire a job in a BPO industry. Also, I would like to add certain other points that apart from those skills, you also need to have good typing skills, you need to have good ana analytical skills and you should also have good logical thinking. So, these are also going to be very handy to you.
for you to get a job in a BPO industry. So, thank you for your time and I would uh, request two volunteers to come up here and through this role play we would like to demonstrate few skills which we have just learnt. Alright students, now we are going to watch a mock demonstration by a recruiter from a BPO firm who is going to be interviewing a potential BPO candidate. Hello Tanvi, thanks for coming for the interview for our BPO. Uh, tell us something about yourself, Tanvi. Uh, I have just completed my 10 plus 2 and I am doing a correspondence course in BCom from IGNU. Right. And apart from uh, that, I would like to know why do you want to join our organization? Yours is the premier most BPO organization in the country and I am doing a 6 month certificate course in communication for BPO from IGNU University All right. and I think this course will equip me with the skills required to handle any customer care qu query. All right, surely it will do that. Uh, Tanvi, I am giving you an example. Uh, let's say you uh, you get a call from a customer who is extremely angry with our services and he is extremely annoyed with the kind of services we have offered. So, how would you like to, how would you solve his query? I would do three things. One, I would hear the customer out. I would find mm -hmm. out all his grievances. And two, I will apologize for any shortcomings from on our behalf. Three, I would assure him that this will not happen again and ensure him of our complete services. Alright, that's good on your part Tanvi. So you can wait at our reception. My colleague will come and inform you about the next round of interview. Thanks Thank for you. coming. So students, through this mock demonstration, we have learnt few skills which are required to find a job in a BPO industry. Now the secret to crack a BPO interview is also to have a positive frame of mind a lot of confidence and also you should be task oriented and have the ability to strike a rapport between good positive relationships and your responsibilities. So with this I would like to thank you all for taking the time out and I wish you all the very best for your careers. Thank you.